Hello, my name is Alex and welcome to a Find My Past webinar in which I will be giving you a quick overview of our collection of historic newspapers as well as five tips for finding out even more about your ancestors. We will be taking questions throughout so simply pop any you may have in the box on the left hand side of the screen at any point and we'll try our best to get through as many as we can. The collection of British newspapers available on Find My Past was launched in partnership with the British Library back in 2011. Since then, we have been busily scanning and digitising millions of pages of historical newspapers and making them searchable online for the first time ever. The partnership marked the start of a 10-year project to digitise up to 40 million pages from the British Library's vast collection. You can now search hundreds of millions of articles by keyword, name, location, date or title and watch the results appear in an instant. In the past, this sort of research would have required hours of painstaking manual research pouring through mounds of hard copies or hours of microfilm. The British Library's newspaper collections are among the finest in the world. They have an almost complete collection of British and Irish newspapers from 1840 onwards, as well as a vast number of older publications. Our scanning team has access to their original bound volumes and are able to scan some of the rarest and most fragile newspapers in the library's possession. The British Library's newspaper collections are amongst the finest in the world. They have an almost complete collection of British and Irish newspapers from 1840 onwards, as well as a vast number of older publications. Our scanning team has access to their original bound volumes and are able to scan some of the rarest and most fragile newspapers in the library's possession. The library's full collection currently includes over 664,000 bound volumes and parcels, occupying roughly 12 miles of shelving, over 370,000 reels of microfilm, and over 52,000 separate newspaper, journal and periodical titles. This is largely thanks to illegal deposit legislation of 1869, which required all newspapers to, sp to supply a copy of each edition to the library. The systematic collection of newspapers began at the British Museum in 1822. Back then, the British Museum was a precursor to the British Library, and at that time, publishers were required to send copies of their publications to the stamp office so they couldn't be taxed. That year, it was agreed that these copies would then be passed on to the museum's library after a period of three years. From 1869 onwards, newspapers were required to send copies of each issue directly to the library to be archived. The project to digitise up to 40 million pages is still ongoing, and new titles as well as millions of new articles are added to our online collection every single month. The newspaper collection available on Find My Past is the same as that on our sister site, the British Newspaper Archive. While the BNA benefits from a more powerful, specifically designed search, the collection on Find My Past allows you to explore hundreds of historic newspapers as part of your subscription to Find My Past. The collection currently allows you to search for your ancestors across more than 13.7 million pages from, 16, from 612 distinct titles. It spans more than 240 years of British and world history, containing articles from the early 1700s up to the latter half of the 20th century. Unlike the rest of our various data sets, newspapers cannot be searched in the wider context of our other collections. This means that when you perform a search across all of our records, the information contained within the newspapers will not be included in your results. Newspapers need to be searched independently, and to do this, you need to access our dedicated newspaper and periodical search page. You can do this via the drop-down menu at the top of the screen. From here, you can choose whether to perform a search across our collections of British, Irish or US and world newspapers. You can search by name and keyword. Use the What Else section at the top of the page to enter your keywords. Keywords can literally be anything, from your ancestors' occupation to an event or a location that held significance in their lives, such as the name of a ship they sailed on, a battle they fought in, or the town and village in which they lived. Once you pop the information you're basing your search around into either of the search forms, simply click the blue microscope button to the right. Above this button, you will also see the option to clear your search. This will remove any filters you've added during the course of your research, but we'll cover filters in a little bit more detail later.
My first piece of advice is to always expect a very wide range of results. While each of the 1.7 million pages in our collection has been completely digitised and fully indexed, newspaper digit searches do function slightly differently to those performed across other data sets on Find My Pass, and this will be reflected in the results you see. Newspaper searches identify matches to the details you enter using optical character recognition software. Optic optical character recognition, or OCR for short, pulls text that it is first translated from the original newspaper page into an online format. These pages are electro electronically scanned in and the software then automatically scans the page. This process involves segmenting each page into classified zones to help with your searching. Finally, the output OCR text is indexed into the enormous database you see on our website. The strength of OCR is that it does make it possible to search incredibly large quantities of full text information at once. However, as the results are identified electronically, they have not been manually reviewed or corrected and the process is not always 100% accurate. The accuracy of your results can depend on a variety of factors, but it essentially boils down to three key aspects. The condition of the original newspaper or microfilm, the quality of that paper, and the size and style of the font and column layouts. The sheer variety found within different publications from different eras can also make things rather tricky. Our OCR software often has to contend with highly complex page layouts that frequently change radically over time. An incredibly wide array of variable font sizes and character types, as well as the incredibly narrow spaces between lines, often used by publishers who wish, wish to cut down on paper costs, can also cause issues. The conditions of the original scanned documents can also have an impact, as poor quality or do it deteriorated papers and inks mean that a number of editions in the collection can be quite faded, while many editions contain missing or misprinted text. Sketches, photographs and other graphic elements can also affect the outcome of your search. For this reason, I always believe it's best to start with an open mind and narrow your results down as you go along. Don't be put off if at first you're presented with a long list of seemingly irrelevant results, as these will quickly vanish once you begin to filter your search. My second tip is to always remember to check the newspapers during the course of your existing research. One of the best things about the newspaper collection is how well it reflects the wide range of details and events recorded in our other various data sets. Family, your family rumours might find their proof in these pages. Scandals, suicides, crimes and affairs are all printed without qualms and you may discover the truth behind those Chinese whispers. You may uncover some accomplishment or noteworthy deed within your family that you've been previously unaware of before. The scale of the newspaper publishing industry from the early 19th century onwards is truly enormous, with many cities and towns publishing several newspapers simultaneously, often aimed at distinct audiences depending on social status, geographical location and political affiliation. Newspapers which aim for a county circulation from Staffordshire to Sussex make up the bulk of the collection available on Farm My Past. Local newspapers can provide an unrivalled picture of provincial life spanning the whole of the 19th century. Papers can reveal details that you simply won't find in other records. Any articles you find that do feature any mention of your ancestors will add much more colour to your understanding of them, more so than any other record set that simply lists locations, events, occupations or titles. You will likely find fresh details about their lives that have the potential to open up all kinds of new inquiries. This is why newspapers can come in particularly handy when you feel like you have exhausted all possible avenues and hit the dreaded brick wall. As so many of the titles included are regional publications, You'll find reports on nearly all aspects of life, from the biggest news stories of the day to the smallest of local affairs.
Within the collection, you will find news coverage centred around all manner of local and national events, and it's always worth a quick search to check against any new information you find in our other data sets. For example, if your ancestors served in the armed forces and fought in a conflict such as the First World War, a search in the newspapers could unearth a report, could unearth a report on any awards they received, their capture by the enemy, or details surrounding their death if they were killed in the line of duty. You may even be lucky enough to find a photograph of them. After finding a death record, you may find that your ancestor was killed in an accident or died under unexplained circumstances. If this was the case, you may even find a coroner's inquiry revealing incredibly high levels of detail. If your ancestor was listed as either a victim or a perpetrator in any of our crime, prisons and punishment records, you do stand a very high chance of finding numerous reports that will contain in-depth descriptions of their case, revealing numerous details that are not included in the records. You may find court reports in which your ancestors' behaviour and personality were described, reports on the case describing the evidence presented in the court, and reports on the court's subsequent findings. You may even be lucky enough to find a direct quote from your ancestor. These reports can also reveal a whole host of valuable biographical details and, depending on the severity of the crime, it may even contain images or sketches relating to the case. Local newspapers can also allow you to uncover details of your ancestor's career and you may even find them looking for work in many of the numerous Situations Wanted pages. Obituaries are also a fantastic source of information about the lives and achievements of both your ancestors and notable public figures. Papers are also invaluable for adding context to your research, allowing you to gain a far deeper understanding of the world in which your ancestor lived. As well as reading any information you uncover about your relatives, it's certainly worth taking the time to read other articles from the same paper and or others of a similar date. Reading letters pages and opinion pieces is a fantastic way of gaining in some insight into how your ancestor may have actually viewed the world. My next top tip is arguably the most important and that is to filter your results as you go along. You can apply your filters before, during or after your search, though I tend to start off as broad as I can in order to get a better idea of what I'm up against and gradually apply the necessary filters until I'm left with a manageable number of results. So, back to our search page now, and now you need to focus your attention on the narrow down your search results section on the left hand side of the page. From here, you have the option to filter your results by date, place, county, newspaper title and article type. Once you have selected a filter, you will then be presented with a list of options that will indicate the number of articles available to you. As you can see here, selecting the filter by place will present you with a full list of the regions covered by our archive and the number of articles from each region. Filtering by newspaper will then reveal the full list of titles on offer that cover at least parts of that specified area. Again, you will see the total number of articles listed for each individual publication. If you have already entered a name or a keyword, this will indicate how many times the words you have searched for appear on the pages and how hard the relevant articles will be to locate. It is always worth remembering that you can add as many filters as you want. Your, resu your results will be ordered roughly by relevance, but if you are presented with an impossibly large number of possible results, you will need to add additional filters to further refine your search. Filtering by date is probably the most effective way to narrow things down. At first you will be given the option to narrow your results down to within a 50 year period. The list of possible date ranges you have to choose from will also give you an indication of the period covered by the publications or within the regions you have selected with your earlier filters. As you, can hear, as you can see here, selecting the Liverpool Daily Post as one of our filters has revealed that we currently have editions of the paper dating from the mid-19th up to the mid-20th century. Once you've selected the 50-year period that you are interested in, 
you will then be given the option to break your results down even further by decade. Once you've selected the relevant decade, the list of possible date filters will be refined yet again, allowing you to only view results from one specific year if you so choose. And it doesn't stop there. Once you've selected a year, you can then filter by calendar month and narrow your results to all the way down until you're only being presented with articles that were printed on one specific day. The narrower the date range covered by your search, the more accurate your results are going to be. And last but not least, the final filter you can add is article type. This allows you to search specifically for illustrated pages, family notices, advertisements, news reports or other types of article. My fourth top tip is to carry on reading even after you've read the article presented to you by our OCR software. Exploring individual titles in depth is fascinating and you may well come across additional useful information that you would have otherwise missed. Our newspaper viewer allows you to do this with relative ease and it can come in particularly useful if you have a special interest in the history of a certain area or time period. To view an article in our image viewer, simply click the image icon next to the article description and the OCR derived text. The archive is literally packed with a wide variety of weird and wonderful publications that you may wish to read in their entirety. My personal favourite has to be the Illustrated Police News. Once voted the worst newspaper in England by readers of the Pall Mall Gazette, the, Illustri the Illustrated Police News was one of Britain's very first tabloids and one of the first periodicals to tap into the public's morbid appetite for crime and sensation. Founded in 1843, it was originally priced at one penny and sold incredibly well with a weekly circulation around 175,000 copies, most of which were sold in Manchester, Liverpool and Birmingham. It was generally considered to be a working man's paper and was frequently condemned for appealing to lowbrow tastes, yet it was not the stories that attracted the most criticism. It was the lewd and graphic illustrations of blood spurting from wounds and women's faces twisted in terror as they were attacked by cruel husbands and hosts of scantily clad sleepwalkers who always happened to be attractive young ladies. Here's an 1870 edition of the paper that I've previously opened in our newspaper viewer. On the left hand side of the screen you can see six small buttons roughly resembling the shape of a crucifix. The four arrow buttons allow you to navigate the page using small movements rather than simply clicking and dragging your cursor across the screen. The button in the centre of these arrows allows you to rotate the page. The plus and minus buttons allow you to zoom in and out more accurately than double clicking and the bottom button will make the page you are viewing full screen. This is particularly useful when reading articles with very small text or ones that are spread out over multiple columns. At the top of the viewer you can see the title and the date of the publication and just below you will see two drop down menus. One showing the total number of pages and the number of the page that you are currently on and another showing the section of the page that the OCR software has picked out to match your search. In this case a boat accident off Hastings featured on the front page. Use the page drop down menu to turn to page 2 or to any other page for that matter. You can also use the blue arrows situated on either side of the viewer to flick back and forth throughout the pages. If the article related to your search is spread out over more than one page, the viewer will continue to draw your attention to the relevant section of the subsequent page. Using the article drop down, you will be able to, you will be able to bring up a list of all the headlines of each individual article on that page. You can select any of the articles listed and the highlighted block will jump across the page to focus on that specific article. As you can see here, I have used the article drop down menu to move from the rather unpleasant article about the terrible accident off Hastings, situated in the centre of the page, to the far cheerier Everybody's Column, located on the far right hand of the page.
My final tip is to use the article type filters to help you in the hunt for your ancestors. Think small. Newspapers are a fantastic resource for tracking down information relating to the key events in your ancestors' lives. Family notices feature heavily. Birth, marriage and death notices as well as other related announcements such as engagements, anniversaries, in memoriam columns, birthdays and congratulations can be found in abundance in many local titles. After finding a record of your ancestor's birth, marriage or death in either our GRO records or in one of our many collections of UK parish records, it's usually worth entering their name into the newspaper search and using the article type filter to look for corresponding reports in the paper's family notice section. Remember to narrow down your search by county and date, preferably down to one year, using the information you've found in the BMD records. Here's an example. After finding a death record for one of my paternal ancestors, a Mr Thomas Cox, I simply popped his name into the search bar and filtered by region, as the record I had found revealed that he had died in London in 1899. After applying the article type filter in order to search for Thomas specifically across articles that OCR has identified as family notices, my options to filter by date are automatically narrowed down. This reveals that there, only what, there is only one article of that type and from that area that includes a mention of a Thomas Cox between 1900 and 1949. While I know that Thomas died in 1899, there is only one result from this period, whereas there are 37 from between 1850 and 1899. It's certainly worth checking results such as this, even if it is only to eliminate them as a possibility. After glancing at my results and the brief summaries listed for each entry, I can see that the result from 1900 relates to a Thomas Cox who appeared in an edition of the era that was published very shortly after my ancestor's death. Family notices and similar announcements are also an excellent means of finding previously undiscovered ancestors as the vast majority of them tend to list more than one family member. Death notices will reveal the names of those your ancestor left behind while birth notices will reveal the names of either their children or their parents, and marriage notices will reveal the name of their spouse, and occasionally their parents and in-laws. Once more, the notices will reveal exactly when and where these events took place, providing you with the information you need to quickly find a match in our parish records. Local articles can provide us with a glimpse of events through the eyes of the community that experience them. They can include reports of visitors to and from a certain town, details of local court cases and legal matters such as the settling of estates or land sales, and reports on local events that your ancestor may have participated in or attended, such as summer fates, concerts, plays or sporting events, all of which will give you a far better understanding of the world they lived in. If a census record, business directory or electoral roll has revealed that your ancestor owned a business, you should, certainly, you should certainly filter by article type to search for advertisements, as you may uncover additional information about their business, such as where it was based, what it produced or sold, and even its size. Advertisements tend to be visually rich and will usually include various sketches or photographs of the products on offer. If your ancestor did not own a business, adverts are still a great way of getting a better idea of the taste of the day such as contemporary fashions, the nation's favourite foods and other fashionable items that your ancestors may have coveted. <coughs> if you cannot find your ancestor now, the titles and date ranges you're looking for may well be added in the near future. As mentioned earlier, millions of new articles are added every month and monthly newspaper roundups are published regularly on our blog. Oh, that's it. Thanks very much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. We are still taking questions, so continue to pop any you may have in the box on the left-hand side of the screen and we will continue to try and get through as many as we can. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and good luck in all your future searches. Be sure to let us know if our newspaper's collection helps you uncover something surprising, as we always love hearing your stories. Thanks again.